Good morning, everyone. Glad that you found us for our online worship. If you would please remember to check in your attendance and include everybody that is watching as we track that attendance for you. As we begin our second Sunday in Advent, we look at Jesus as the gift of light, and we see how that light still shines today through you and me. Let's get going with our opening song. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read responsibly sections of Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing glory to his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him, who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living, and has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. 
You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us to the net. You laid an, a crushing burden on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a place of abundance. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the good news of our loving Heavenly Father, for he indeed has had mercy upon us and has sent his Son, Jesus, to die for us. So in the stead and by the command of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go and serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, being his light. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Our continuation of Luke's Christmas story begins at Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia.
the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first and third chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was a light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed." But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, boys and girls, it's Deaconess Kim with the children's message for today. If you're in a room with no windows and the lights are turned off, can you see anything? No, you can't because it's dark. For a lot of people, that can feel pretty scary. But what happens when you turn on the light switch? The room lights up, right? The darkness has to go away because of the light. In the Bible, John writes this, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Do you know what that means? It means that the light will always win. There's no darkness that can stay dark when there's light shining on it. Now, we see a lot of dark in the world, don't we? Now, I'm not talking about nighttime darkness or dark rooms anymore. I'm talking about things like sickness or death or people being mean to each other or other bad things happening, things like that. Those are dark things, and they make life really hard. And we have darkness inside of us too, don't we? We don't always say nice things or do nice things. We don't always love people the way God loves us. But here's the good news. God sends us a wonderful gift. God sends us light. The light that lights up the dark world and lights up the darkness inside of us. So who does God send? That's easy, right? You know that answer. God sends Jesus. Jesus is the light that God sends. God doesn't want us to be stuck in the dark, so he sent Jesus to be a bright light in our world. Jesus lights up the things that makes our lives dark. He shines on everything, and there's no darkness that's too dark. God sent Jesus, our light, because he loves us so much. So this week, every time you turn on a light, I want you to think about Jesus. Remember how Jesus is light and shines in our lives. Thank God for that great gift. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the gift of Jesus. He is my light when the world is dark. Help me share the light of Jesus with other people. In Jesus' name, amen. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward beaming bright. So most gracious Lord may we Which
To you, online viewers, chosen by God, our Heavenly Father, for obedience to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to be lights shining in this dark world, grace and peace be to you. So as we continue our Advent series, following along and tracking with our Sunday School, what they are learning in Sunday School today, too, we're talking about Jesus as the gift of light. Light, And after all, last week, we looked at Jesus as the gift of life. And I really liked how Pastor Tom had explained that, that uh, when John lays out his gospel, he begins uh, with the cosmos, right? The beginning. Um, and I love the analogy as I was uh, on Thanksgiving break up in South Dakota, having been well stuffed and fed, um, his concept of how the uh, other gospel writers maybe would have explained a turkey dinner and, you know, all the fixings that would go with it. But John talks about how these things become part of our body, you know, the nutrients that keep us alive, that make us do our thing. And that's the way that John presents his gospel. And I like that today, too. Because when we dig into John's gospel and he talks about this light thing, we hear him explain things like this. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. You see, John expands on this, that Jesus is life, and Jesus gives life. And without Jesus, there is no life. Jesus is, after all, as John says, the light of men. And he is our light because of what he has done for you and for me. Jesus came into this world to suffer and die for you and for me. He took our sins and nailed them to the cross and was risen victorious on that Easter morning so that we will have life. Life, eternal life, and new life in him. You see, today's gift, we see how Jesus is indeed our life. And because Jesus is the light, he makes us light too. Because he is in our DNA. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus truly shines through you and through me. This is John's way of explaining to you and me, how much we need Jesus in our lives, in our daily lives, especially when we walk in this veil of tears. Although I 
would sometimes agree that it doesn't feel this way, right? Seems like the darkness is winning and and John certainly reminds us that this is what we'll face in this world in John 3 verses 19 and 20. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. Especially during this pandemic, we probably have felt more like we are walking in the dark. I remember a couple of people saying that it just seems crazy. Nothing seems to make sense anymore. It's just chaos and confusion. And even this past week, you throw in another school shooting. And it definitely reminds us of what John says about this world. Can we honestly expect anything different, though, as the way John explains it? We need to remember that anyone without Jesus is in the dark. And this is a sad thing. Because unless they see Jesus, they are lost in their darkness eternally. Remember, St. Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 5 that we once were in darkness, but now we are in the light. We walk as children of the light because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have to be honest. We are not the light ourselves. Jesus makes us light. And without Jesus, we are darkness. And we are all too familiar with the dark side of ourselves, right? Those dark sides of our hearts, the daily struggles that we battle with in our sin. But we remember, we do not fight this alone because Jesus fights for us. Remember his words. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We have Jesus, so we have power over darkness. Jesus is the light of the world, and through Jesus, we too can be the light of the world. And this makes a big difference in our world and for the world around us, those that are still lost in darkness. We have impact. Today we are facing a crisis in our churches. The light is flickering, and it certainly is not good. We are at a cultural crossroads, whether we want to face up to it or not. Mainline churches and many church-going folks have lost sight of what it means to be light in this world, which really means they have taken their eyes off of Jesus. In 2005, Christian Smith and Melinda Linquist Denton released a book called Soul Searching, The Religious and Spiritual Lives of American Teenagers. In their book, Smith and Denton coined the term moralistic therapeutic deism to describe the de facto dominant religion among contemporary teenagers and others that have commented and referenced this resource would claim that this today is our new world view. Moralistic therapeutic deism? What in the heck does that mean? Well, it can be summarized pretty easily. Moralistic, God wants people to behave. Therapeutic, God wants people to be happy and well-adjusted. Deism, well, we probably are a little bit more familiar with that, but this just simply means that there is a God and he made the world and then he just kind of left it alone. He's a hands-off kind of God. But do you notice there's not a lot about Jesus? There's nothing about taking up your cross and following Jesus. Obedience to God's will. Being an ambassador for Jesus Christ as we are called to point people to the light. You see, the Christian life isn't all about being happy or being well-adjusted. And in fact, 
oftentimes when we are called to follow the light of Christ means that we will be called to suffer just like Jesus did, just like his original followers did when they were working with other people there. Oftentimes they were persecuted for the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, the world is darkness and it does not recognize Jesus at all. You see, we are not alone in this calling, and and in fact, we are actually well-equipped. And we see these stories in our Bible over and over and over again. Take Daniel, for instance. He was a child of God living in a lost culture. Now, if you read the whole book of Daniel, you realize that it's not as if he really ever got out of the lion's den. You remember that time when he got stuck in the lion's den and an angel came down and shut the mouths of the lions to keep Daniel safe. But it's safe to say that Daniel wasn't living his best life ever as he was living in this foreign pagan land. Sure, he had some notoriety and and a bit famous living in the Persian Empire. But he was a fish out of water living among the rich and powerful in his culture. And we have lots of stories in the book of Daniel that express exactly this. Daniel remembered to be faithful to God and to not lose his light. Daniel served under this king named Belshazzar. This is Nebuchadnezzar's son. And this king throws a great big gigantic party with the temple dishes. Things that were originally dedicated for the most holy place on the earth, this king is throwing a party with them as if he's using red solo cups, foam plates, and plastic silverware. Talk about playing with fire. I know the altar guild's paying attention right now. Daniel gets to break the bad news to the king. Because in the middle of a party, God's hand comes into that place and he writes this on the wall. The words on the wall were mene, mene, tekel, perez. And the king was terrified. He had no idea what this meant. He called all his wise people to figure it out and they had no idea what it meant either. And the king's wife said, there is one amongst the children of Israel that can interpret. Perhaps he can interpret. The king had promised all kinds of glory to anybody that would be able to translate. And Daniel came into the room, and he read and interpreted what was written on the wall. And he said, keep your stuff, because I know that your money really isn't any good here. This interpreted meant this. God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. You see, basically, Daniel gets to interrupt this party with these sad words for him. Basically, Yahweh was done with this king. And the new king that he would appoint, King Darius, would actually go so far as to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem again. You see, the light shines, even in places where you would think there would be great, deep darkness. John reminds us that we are the Daniels of today. He writes, But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. You see, when we stay close to Jesus, we have life. When we follow Jesus, we are the light. Jesus has called you and me to be his followers. Jesus has called you and me to be his sons and daughters. Jesus has called you and me 
into this culture of darkness so that we can shine his light, so that others may see his love and come into a right relationship with him too. Matthew writes it this way, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But they put it on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And may the peace which surpasses our human understanding guard your hearts and keep your minds in Christ Jesus so that you shine as light. Let us sing. We continue with our worship by the giving of our tithes and offerings, which you are seeing put before you, the different options that you have for giving. And we certainly appreciate your continued giving, even though you haven't been able to make it here in person. A great reminder prayer found in our Lutheran service book, hymn number 781, puts this in perspective. We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Indeed, we are thankful for the blessings our Heavenly Father has given to us, and we pray that these gifts and offerings will continue his kingdom work among us. Remember also that we have our annual voters meeting on Wednesday, December 8th at 715, following our second midweek service, which begins at 630. St. Stephen will be covering our annual budget also, in that budget is returning back into the Vicarage program. For more information on that, make sure you come to our voters meeting, but we will also have that voters meeting via Zoom online. Links to get into that meeting are provided for you in your Teen Jesus News. Lutheran High School's Christmas concert is is December 5th at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Everyone is welcome to come and enjoy this free concert featuring choir, band, and handbell Christmas music. Invite a friend for an evening filled with the sounds of Christmas. Our children's Christmas program practice is this coming Saturday, December 11th from 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. Following practice, we'll have the children's Christmas party in the fellowship hall. Cookie making, a Christmas movie, and lunch will be provided. The party ends at 1 p.m. Sixteen families from the Liberty Women's Clinic have been adopted by some of our members. If you are unable to sponsor at this time but would still like to make a contribution to these families, you can do so by providing a gift card or monetary donation to the church office by Wednesday, December 15th. All donations will be divided evenly among our sponsored families. You can check the Team Jesus News for any more information about these announcements and everything going on at St. Stephen. At this time, we'll make confession of our Christian faith to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The King shall come when morning dawns and my triumphant praise when beauty gilds the eastern hills and life to joy As a bold, a little child to bear and fight and die, but crowned with glory. 
This morning in our prayers, we want to remember Olivia Medell and her three children as she is trying to get into our Hillcrest apartment. Prayers for Cassidy Bammon for good testing results. Prayers for Haley. This is Linda Locke's granddaughter and all impacted by the Oxford High School shooting. Fortunately, Haley was able to get away. Prayers for Denny. This is Kelly Anson's cousin with COVID. Prayers for Katie. This is Deaconess Kim's sister who had surgery. Prayers for her recovery. Prayers for two of Jim's students, a former student that was in college but had to drop out to care for her father, and there are lots of turmoil in the family at home, and another 14-year-old as his brother was killed in a drug deal. Prayers for that family. Prayers for Jan Magorian and her continued recovery. Prayers for George Hauser and his battle with cancer. Prayers for Al Peters as he had a fall with a broken hip and recovering at North Kansas City Hospital. Also prayers for the Missy Green family. This is a sorority sister of Shelley Curtis. Missy's son, Gavin, tragically committed suicide. And just prayers for all those that are suffering with mental illnesses. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Protecting Father, look with mercy on the sick, injured, and recovering, especially for Olivia and her kids, for Cassidy for Haley and all those impacted at the Oxford High School shooting. Prayers for Denny and Katie. Prayers for Jim's students. Prayers for Jan Magorian. Prayers for George Hauser and for Al Peters. If it be your will, give them healing, restoration, and strength. Sustain and comfort those who mourn the death of loved ones. Especially we pray for the Green family, for Jim's students' family, and for those impacted at Oxford High School with the loss of life. Comfort these families that they may find hope in the resurrection of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, you give us new life and the power of baptism. Help us daily to remember that you have made us your children in baptism. So we celebrate with Chase, Gladys, Allison, Riley, Brennan, Vicki, Julie, and Michelle as they celebrate their baptismal birthdays. Keep them and all of us in your baptismal promises. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to be our Savior, and he is the hope of the world. Help us not not only to receive this babe in Bethlehem, but to share him, so that your loving kindness and faithfulness will bring joy to all people. Help your church to boldly witness about the love you have for us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, grant justice and fairness in this world so that the good news of Jesus reaches the ears of every nation. Help our leaders to govern wisely and continue to protect us from our enemies. Watch over our military, especially those in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with and abide with you always. Amen.
Oh, come, Lord.